Today's reaction is reactivity of aromatic compounds. We have three different reagents to start with. NH2, and it'll be called aniline. R if OCH3, it will be called anisole. And if R is NHCOCH3, it will be acetanilide. So these are all common names of these reagents. So at the end of the reaction, I would dry the product, weigh the product, and then also take melting points. So you can compare it with to the table in page 38, and then come to a conclusion what product is formed, and put them in order of reactivity. If it's monobrominated, it'll be the least reactive. If it's the tribrominated, it'll be the highest reactive reagent. So this is the bromination setup for acetanilide. I have labeled it since we have three different setups for aniline, acetanilide, and anisole. So I weighed around 0.47 grams of acetanilide. As you can see, it's a solid. And we're going to drop a stir bar in there. So with the Claisen head that goes on top, and this is a thermometer adapter. Using this, I'm going to use a glass insert, just like this, and attach a tubing, which goes on top here. So this tubing is going to be attached with the drying tube, which will have some glass wool. So this is glass wool. I'm going to moisten with a couple drops of one molar sodium bisulfide. So we're going to add one or two drops just to make it moisten and not wet. And this goes in the drying tube. And I'm going to attach it with the tubings right here. So this is going to catch any bromine vapors that might be escaping from the solution. So I've attached a second clamp just to give the tubing some support. I'm going to add my 2.5 ml of glacial acidic acid. So we'll let it stir for some time. You can already see there's some yellow precipitate, yellow orange precipitate forming, and I will let it start for about 20 minutes for the reaction. It's been about 20 minutes. I'm going to transfer the product mixture into a 125E flask. So I'm transferring the rest of the product with the help of some DI water. And right now, I'm going to add my 2.5 ml of saturated bisulfide. Take a close look what happens when I add it. You see some gas? So this is some gas formation happening in the mixture. This is part of your post lab question. So now I'm going to let it cool down in some ice cold water. So I will go ahead and filter out the acetanilide product. I put the filter paper in the flask, wet the filter paper with some DI water, then turn on the vacuum. And wash the urn mat flask with some DI water, cold DI water, which goes on the filtering funnel. The product looks pale yellow, so I'm going to add a about five ml of DI water on the top. Turn on the vacuum. So that's the acetanilide product sitting in the vacuum. I'm going to turn off the vacuum and scoop the product onto the watch glass. And I do have my store bar. I'm gonna take it out with a magnetic retriever. So the product looks pale yellow and we are going to put it in the oven to dry before we can take the melting point. So this is the aniline reaction, uh, the aniline stirring with the acidic acid. 
Now I'm going to add my bromine mixture, HPR bromine mixture. This is 5 ml. I'm going to pour it down the Claisen head. So it's been about 20 minutes. I'm going to turn off the stirring and transfer this reaction mixture. This is aniline, as you can see it's labeled. I'm going to transfer it to a 125E flask. So I will place the product mixture in some ice bath and let it cool down before filtration. And now I'm going to transfer the product onto the wash glass. So this is my anisole reaction, where anisole is stirring with the glacial acidic acid. Now I'm going to add my five ml of bromine HBR mixture. So the anisole would be stirring for about 30 minutes. It takes a little longer to react compared to aniline and acetanilide. We add about five. So that's our product. aniline product and acetanilide product into the oven to dry. So let's take out our dry product. So that's the melting point apparatus and we have our three products, the aniline product, the acetanilide product and anisole product. I'm going to put some of the sample from each one into a melting point capillary. And the melting point capillary looks like this. So if you can see, one end is closed. So that's the closed end. And this end is open. So I'm going to tap some product onto this open end. So let's do the acetanilide. So tap some product and then turn it around and tap it down. So now you can see you will have a little bit of product into the capillary and that's all you want. Capillary in the melting point apparatus and here's your thermometer. Make sure that the thermometer reads above 200 degrees because you might have a high melting compound and then you can turn it on right here and let it start heating.
So here's the table for the lab data. And we have a table because there's a couple data that needs to be recorded on this experiment. We have melting point of products. And for the anisole product, the melting point was 59 degrees Celsius. And for acetanilide product, the melting point was 165 degrees Celsius. And for aniline, the melting point was 121 degrees Celsius. So compare these melting points from the table that's in the book, which is on page 38, and identify the product. So that's one of your goals, find product identity. Which of these formed which product? Is it a monobrominated product? Is it a dibrominated product or a tribrominated product? And for the percent yield, this is all the grams. So that's, this is the mass we started with for anisole, acetanilide, and aniline. And that's the mass of filter paper plus watch glass, which is the empty mass of watch glass and filter paper. These are the numbers. And this is after the dried product. So the difference of these two numbers would give you the mass of the product in each case for anisole, acetanilide, and aniline. And that should help you find percent yield.